I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at creating shadow boxes. First of all, I want to show you some shadow boxes that are already in Design Space, although you may not see them as a shadow box to begin with. So if we go to images and we come up to category and select all images, you'll see under highlighted categories, we've got image sets. So if we select that, and I'm going to search for dimensional. So there's quite a few sets in here that you can work with to create a shadow box. So this nativity uh, set here takes a little bit of work, but actually the layers are already done for you. You just need to shape them. Spooky Hollow, there's three in there that are traditional kind of ready to go shadow boxes. And then there's a fourth one, which again, the layers are already there. You just need to change the sizes. Mermaid Tales is a really good set. European Destinations, there's some really great created layers in there already. Again, you just need to change the sizes. Dino Tales, super, super popular. They look amazing and they are great as shadow boxes. There's one in particular, which is this one, which is actually a card. So I'm going to select it. I'm gonna show you very quickly how you amend it from a card to a shadow box. Fairy Tales, beautiful, beautiful, uh, ready to go, kind of to be put in a frame, cut out. Stunning is Fairy Tales. Tea and Cakes requires a little bit of work, but again, the layers are all there for you. And same with under the big top, the layers are all there for you, just requires a little bit of tweaking. So if I change my search term to Leah Griffith, and I come down to Leah's Four Seasons Home Decor, there are four really nice shadow boxes in there. So we've got this deer one here, we've got the bird, the fox, and the owl, and they are gorgeous and they're all ready to go. However, I do like to tweak them slightly. So again, I'm gonna show you very quickly how I tweak those ones. So let's work on the card first. So you see it comes in like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup it and I'm gonna get rid of that envelope. I don't need it. Now, if I actually look down the layers panel here, I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers already squared up for me. They're absolutely perfect. It's just this card layer I need to get rid of. And because I've ungrouped, all I need to do is delete it. Now, I always like to have a backing on my shadow box. I normally do it in vellum or I'll do it in a cellophane or a tracing paper so that the lights aren't as harsh. So I always like to create a back plate. Just a nice easy way of doing it is if I get one of the layers and I duplicate it and I simply go to contour, hide all contours, that then gives me that solid background. I can then go to arrange and center back. Now, if I'm going to cut my shadow box all in one color, so for example, using white cardstock, I will go straight to make it. But if I want to do it in colors, I actually change my colors now. So for example, the front layer, if I come over to my color block next to my line type and I go to advanced, I can find some colors that are very similar to the cardstock I'm going to use. And of course it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can get close to the cardstock, it gives you more of an idea of what it's going to look like. But if it's purple, I know I'm using a purple cardstock. If it's red, I know I'm using a red cardstock. And then the only thing that you need to be aware of is if we look at this dinosaur up here, the Petrodon, he's not actually a layer. So he is going to cut out individually and then you would glue him onto that layer. All I would then do is draw around and select everything. I'd make sure it's all centered by going to align and center. And I can on this one because it's perfectly square. The only thing that's gonna change is obviously him, but he's an individual cutout anyway. And then I just need to size it up so it's going to fit in my frame. So really nice and easy to work with that one. So these Leo Griffith ones, I absolutely love them. The only thing is that I find once they're cut, you end up with a lot of border 
and not a huge amount of image. The border and the image are kind of slightly disproportionate. In my eyes, I'd like a bigger image. So that's really easy for me to do. Now, if I want to go straight to cut this, I can. And equally, if I'm using different colored layers again, I can change each of the layers. Thing is, this is not square. So if we look at our dimensions, it's just very slightly out of squareness and I want to turn it into a square so it fits better into my frame as well. Now at the moment it doesn't matter what size it is but just for ease I'm going to make the width 10. I'm going to go over to my shapes and I'm going to get a square and I'm going to make my square 8 inches. I'm going to draw around a line and center so that's perfectly centered if I then click in my layers panel on the owl shadow box I can ungroup it so that my layers become individual and my square is automatically going to go to the back that's absolutely fine so I'm going to hide all of the layers except for my square and the back piece of my owl shadow box very nice and easy. All I'm going to do is draw around and I'm going to slice. And of course, as we know, we can only slice two layers at a time. So once I've sliced, I end up with four layers. So I've got two colored layers and two black layers. My two black layers I need to keep because I'm going to weld them back together to create that square again. And then I need to choose which of the colored layers I'm going to get rid of. So one is your actual shape layer and one is literally just a cutout frame. And so it's the cutout frame we're getting rid of. So I'm just going to select it in my layers panel and delete. I can then hide that colored layer and I'm left with my two black layers. If I draw around them, I can weld them back together and they become a solid square. And it just means that I'm not having to create a new square every time, and I'm not having to make sure that everything's in line because I'm not actually moving anything, I'm only hiding it. So if we look at our layers panel, we've got weld result and slice result. So I can bring the next layer back, exactly the same again, highlight and slice. I have two black layers and two colored layers. One of my colored layers is a cutout frame, so that's the layer I'm going to delete. I can then hide that slice result. That leaves me with my two black cutouts. I can highlight and weld and turn them back into a complete box. So now I've got one welded box and I've got two sliced out layers. If I bring back the next layer, very nice and easy, highlight and slice. Again, if we look at our layers panel, we've got two black layers, two colored layers. The cutout frame is the one I'm getting rid of, so I can delete that. Hide the colored frame that's left and then weld these two back together to make them a solid box. So now if we look at our layers panel, we've got our welded box and then we've got three sliced out layers and we've still got two shadow layers. So if I bring back the next shadow layer, exactly the same, highlight and slice. I've got two black layers, two colored layers. The colored layer that's the cut out frame, I'm going to delete that one. I can hide that colored slice result and I can then weld two black pieces back together. If we look at the layers panel again, we've got our welded box, then we've got one, two, three, four slice results and one shadow box layer left. So if I bring that back, highlight and slice, I can get rid of that cut out frame, I don't need it. I can hide this slice result and then I'm going to weld this back together one last time because this is now going to become my back layer. So it'll just be a solid layer of vellum or acetate or whatever I want to do. So I'm just going to change the colour on that to white 
and I'm going to arrange and centre back because I know it needs to be at the back and I can then start bringing back my other layers. So that is now a perfect square and also my image is larger than the border. So I can simply now size that up so it fits in my shadow frame and I can then cut it.